Okay, it's already 1.30, so let's get started for today's lecture. Good b I'm glad I could have come back and teach this <laughs> class. They didn't think I'm a criminal and stop me at the border, so that's a good one. You know, the reason is probably I was driving with three Canadians in the car and they all looked like normal. <laughs> Look like normal. <laughs> they do ask the did you have cashes in your bag? You know, how much is it? Of course, you cannot say I had a lot, right? Then they're gonna <laughs> stop you. Um, but it was a, it was a pretty nice visit. Got to see some part of northern part of the American first time to Canada. So, homeworks. Overall, you guys did all pretty good job. So I, my graduate student uh, Luke helped me to get this corrected. So it's right here. So what's going to happen today is where he went later part of the lecture, which is in the second half. So he'll fill me in to talk to you about uh, the homeworks and give you guys some you know, solutions to this and talk to you guys. So that will be second half of the, this lecture about um, in about uh, uh, 45 minutes or so. He will fill me in. All right, and you can have this back. And test is this Thursday. It's an open book test, so I heard this would be a, a pressure relief for many of you guys. But don't take it for granted. If it's open 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 um, open book uh, exam, it will a little bit more challenging than the closed book. So it will. Oh, so it's open book now instead of take home. Yeah, take home oh, and open book. Okay. No, no, no. It will be taken home, <laughs> and you can open your book. But I was trying to say it will be uh, reflected. Okay. Don't be fooled just as a take home exam. Okay. Are Question. Are they all take home exams? Hmm? Are they all take home exams? I'm sorry, I missed it. What do you mean? Are all of them take home exams? Are all of them? No. The final exam will not be. Oh. Final exam will be uh, a comprehensive one, like the CUM exam. You need to train yourself for that. That is not the. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we gonna because we are now in the second uh, solution property of the of our material. So after this, at the around end of October, we're gonna have another one. Then at the end of November or early December, that's kind of the final wrap up or one, two, three. Okay. No, it will be more than that. Will it be more than four hours? Uh, no, unlikely. Yeah, I will be human enough. I mean, the, the, what's the purpose of a test? Yeah. It wants to know, make sure I understand you are learning and yeah. you are oh, making yes. good progress. Yeah. Is, there, uh, is there a way you could extend it a little past 12 p.m. on Friday just because it will be in a McCormick's exam till late Thursday night? Yeah, did you get like, so like five seminar or something? Or, so, or something like Give that. Give us a little extra time. Because <laughs> we probably won't be done with McCormick's test till like 11 p.m. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So that is an open or closed book text? Closed. It's closed. closed. So it's but it will. As soon as we're done with class on Thursday, we have like an hour, and then we come back and take the test, and he said it should take like four or five hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it should take a while. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's, I'm, I'm still committed to we should have a firm deadline for that. So yeah. I'm still going to hand out the test um, you know, after, before, even before McCormick's class. Just put it in your backpack. Don't open it. Whenever you finish that, you can start working on that, just hand it in the next day by noon. OK? <laughs> that will be good enough time for you guys. And it won't take uh, more than um, th four like four hours, like from a comic. All right. Yeah. So enough about logistics. Let's get back to the science part about uh, polymer solution. So where are we at last time? <laughs> 
previous uh, episode. Delta S of mixing, uh, a lot of buzzword, right? So some of the key things you want to understand is this chapter is about mixing of uh, materials. And if we're going to mix two polymer, will they mix or not? And at the what temperature they will mix? Um, so we're going to dive a little bit more in terms of depth, in terms of understanding two contributions to the mixing. And some of you already spoke about it. You know, while you're trying to see if two A or B will mix or not, there's two parts contributed to it. First part is the enthalpy, or how much heat it wants to take during the mixing, or how much heat it will give out. So the temperature or heat plays a pretty big role. The second part is um, um, what is entropy, where it's related to the degree of disorder while you mix it. And in today's lecture, we're going to um, talk about a little bit more in depth about this entropy part of the mixing. So what this part we're going to talk about is um, follow up with what we had in the last lecture. At the end of last lecture, we start to talk a bit about uh, an ideal case of mixing, where you don't need to consider the polymer property. Just to think about you have small molecular A and B are mixed in two of the beaker, right? So what we finish up in last lecture was talk about <laughs> A plus B. You form a larger volume of uh, solvent A, solvent B, then you have a mixture. A plus B, and we try to understand what this entropy is, right? So that's where we roughly end. Um, and we start to talk about a very famous theory related to our lecture is a uh, Flory Huggins theory, or Flory Huggins. And they usually also call it a lattice theory because you can you can basically think about there's a lot of checkerboards, there's a lot of open slots, and how do you fit in individual polymer or solvents molecular into that in terms of their arrangement, and use that to understand what is delta S entropy. We were about halfway through to understand this term. We talked about what is the first term of um, before mixing and after mixing, right? So before mixing, we know, let's assume you have um, N1 molecular in this box, and M2 molecular in this tiny box. So N1, N2, these are just number as 1 to 100, OK? So while we mix it, you're going to have more molecular combined. So the number is now whatever a M1 plus M2 is. And let's continue, finish this entropy term while you consider a um, mixing of um, solvent molecular A and B. And last lecture, we talked about there's an interesting Einstein equation that can correlate how what's the possibility of arrangement linked to the degree of entropy, right? So S is equal to K, this term. And K is a Boltzmann constant. <laughs> this term is just a total number of possible arrangement you would have, right? And we know in this case, well, you have all the molecules are exactly the same. They are feeding at the exactly the same box. There's no matter what you what do you arrange to that, or which think about as now as a marble. While you were kids, you are playing. You got a 
number of box you want to fill and this moniker you want to fill in in the individual one. If they're all one color and you put it in there, no matter if you fill in this box first or this first in the end, they will look at the exact the same, which is everything will be filled up with solvents molecule. So total possibility of arrangement is one and only one. Right? So same for this case where s will be equal to ln this term. So this will be equal to number one and s is basically zero in this particular case. Okay? And we know th this one for solvent B will be exactly the same. There is no, no, nothing distinguishable between solvent itself. So this will be zero. Now, where we were left at is understand what is about entropy for mixing of N molecular A plus N2 molecular B, right? And I sort of challenged you guys to think about to how to count and how many possible ways you can fill in or different combinations you would have. Use this, and anyone can help me with possible, well, not possibly, but different way of arrangement, how many ways we are. So let's first consider how many different ways we could have in this type of mixing. Oh, please. Anyone? Um, now we just uh, use arbitrary number, but you can think about. We can start. Yeah, so you're gonna factorial n1 plus n2 divided by. Yeah, times n2 factorial. So that would be the total possibility. Oh, uh, not possibility. Why again and again say it's a possibility? It's total number of different way you could have while you fill in uh, a box. So let's play a little bit. So how about let's say n1 equals one and two. Let's put two on each side instead of one. So in other words, you're gonna mix in this two of the white, two of the white one versus two of black molecular in a box of two by two, right? So before mixing, you was just the two molecular and two lattice, and two is solvent B. Then once you combine, your volume is double. Now you, you need to fill four possible locations with uh, um, two different color. Right, so the number of different way you fill in is where you got four um, total of four factorial divided by two. So this will be about six different ways you can fill in. So that relate to how much entropy, or how much you know. If you think about again in the dynamic environment, while solvent molecule can move around. In that case, you're possible to have a total, a total way of arrangement is six compared to the other case where you have, right? It will be just equal to this, All right? So that's the same value as here. Which will tell you the total amount of possibility, a uh, total amount of different way you can arrange the mixture of two solvents. Um, well, it may be a little bit daunting, but the key is if you think about this case, the key question we want to resolve is basically understand how we can get L and arbitrary number, let's say called N1, 
factorial, then we can solve the rest, right? So this this looks a little bit lengthy. Term will be equal to line m1 plus n2 factorial. So that's the top part, right? The bottom part, so will be equals to minus line n1 factorial line m2 factorial okay and it will be all multiplied by k so how we get from here to here it's relatively straightforward so line a divided by b multiplied by c will be equals to line a minor line b because it's in the bottom so uh, for example line b divided by one would be equal to this value and this will be all you can written as line b minus one right they are the same all these Okay, so this is how we can understand where we get from this relatively long equation. So you can see there are basically three parts in this. There's a one part here, logging of total number of molecular in, inside of the solvent, inside the mixture solvent. Logging of first part of the molecular you add in, logging of second part you kind of add in there. So we're not going to go through um, too much about mathematics, but this can be shortened as, let me make sure I got this correct. Yeah. No. So line uh, value factorial will be equal to <laughs> ln n multiplied by n times minus m1. Um, we're not going to go in too deep into the mass, how this works out. We're just going to take advantage of what's the known in the mathematics to help us understand now what's going to happen in this equation. OK? So, where where are we at? So why don't we start to expand the line value factorial into this term? So not too bad, right? So you're gonna have k. This will stay, but it will move once to the front. So you will be equals to m1 plus m2 line m1 plus m2, right? So, and minus the box, m1 plus m2. So we just expanded the, the first part of the equation, correct? Right? So we all, what we did from this part to this part is where we expanded the, the very, very first part. Well, once we put in the second one, you can get m1 line m1 minus. So that's now going to become plus, right? Because this we now can add this, replace the first part. And there's just one more, almost there. m2 line m2 plus n2. Don't be scared by this relatively long equation because we're now going to cancel out a lot of terms. Um, these two terms, m1 plus m2, there's a minus sign behind. So this will be canceled out with this one, and there's n2, right? So these constant m1 and 2 value will not be there. And what left is some of the term we're now going to learn. So we're going to k 
m1 plus n2 and line m1 plus n2 minus m1 line m1 okay so it's actually relative symmetric what you what you saw All right So what, we're gonna, what we will do next step is how can we convert them into some of the other terms that relatively used. So n1 is total number of solvent, just A. n2 is on B. So this is a mixture of solvent, A and B, right? So the first thing we can do is just to convert these to be the volume fraction. So what are we going to do is we know this is the total volume of number fraction. So this is the total number of A plus B. So this is a combination of two, right? So what if we do, we're going to divide everything by M1? So we can, we can, be, oh no. So we can expand here, not divide. Expand here. So you can expand this this equation to be k and one right multiply by ln this you can understand right the n two we're getting very close to what you're gonna see it's an interesting combination. So what I did here was just expand the first part to be m1 multiplied by ln a constant of 2, n2 ln of this. So we're now it's become two terms, and the old term are still here. Uh, you can see these this term together this with this term they. These two terms both start with M1, so we can combine these two together. I'm going to use uh, <laughs> the top of the board to show you what's going to happen. So if you write then, it will be K and 1 line and 1 plus and 2 minus and 1 line and 1. That's the first part, and then we have a symmetric part, which is M2 plus M1 plus N2 minus N2 log M2. So, right? And you're going to have this term again plus a K, okay, right here. And if, since these both have M1, you can combine them to be K n1 line relatively straightforward and you can you can add k the second part will be again similar term n2 divided by now there's some physical meanings into this Uh, this has a physical meaning, right? M, M1, M1 plus M2 divided by M1. That's a number fraction of this molecular inverse. Number fraction is how many you had in terms of total. If we assume A and B are similar size, so we basically say these two molecules are similar size. So this is just a volume fraction of M1 inverse, right? Volume fraction. This is also volume fraction. This is volume fraction of M1. This is volume fraction of M2. And then you can, you can get a very, very simple, beautiful symmetric equation. It will be look like K M1. 
let's just to call it phi 1. We're going to define phi here. Phi is just a volume fraction of m1 divided by n1 plus n2. So that's a volume fraction of what this first solvent is. OK, so you will realize we need a minus 1 here because it's flipped. Right? In this case, we defined n1 divided by total volume. Here is m1 plus n2 divided by where m1 is. And you will do the same. You're going to have a new term called a volume fraction of molecular B. I'm going to start erase a bit. OK? And there's one, one more step we can take, make e even look beautiful for this equation. So this will be equals to minus k n1 ln x1 plus n2 and so this minus one term we actually combine them and take that out. Any questions so far? How we get get to this very beautiful, simplistic, and almost ideally symmetric equation. You know, m1 log m1, and two log m2, and just minus k in front. And n2 and the uh, phi two is basically volume fraction of and how much you had m2 in the total of amount of mixture. How do you just get rid of the negative exponents? Uh, negative comes to here. So ln oh. x minus 1 equals the minor ln x. All right, yeah, so I see that at the beginning there. yeah, there's a minus sign. So in other words, what can we learn? Uh, I like to always like to have a good balance about mathematic equations and the physical meanings. What's the physical meanings for all the effort we did? So we know the entropy of mixing. After we mixed A and B will be equal to minus K. K is just a constant value, right? So this will be K always will be larger than 1. It's a constant. How about X? x is always going to be between 0 and 1. Well, in mixture, that's a volume fraction of one component, right? So in the mixture of A and B, you can either have very little A or have a lot of A, but maximum upper boundary is about 100%, right? And so this volume value, it's maybe a little bit abstract, but this will be. I believe it's larger than zero. No, minus zero, sorry. For ln of one, it's equal to zero. So anything smaller than one, ln is negative value. OK, so we know this will be negative, this will be positive, this will be positive. So s will be always a positive value. OK? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, make total sense. Well, you mix, mix uh, two pure solvent, you increase the amount of disorder. So there, uh, S will be always going to be bigger after mixture. You said that chi is, is, um, is the volume fraction, and then yeah. you have to assume that the particle sizes are equal. So yeah. if we're talking about like mixing a polymer with a solvent, that won't be the case. Very smart, very advanced knowledge. So this will be covered, I promise you. We will go there, but we'll be two lectures from now. Well, we evolve from simple case, where it's just a solvent, solvent, and, and you know, they're equal size to be more complicated, solvent, the polymer, even to a polymer, polymer case, where your, your size of your polymer total matters, 
and we'll see. We will come to that step, um, but not today. So be patient a bit. <laughs> we will get there. And any other things we can think about? We can even think about what would be the mixture of equal amount of um, solvent. So if we say we're going to mix, let's uh, have an example. So let's mix 50 percent, you know, 50 percent of A plus 50 percent of B, you will see. You can use this equation, S will be equals to minus K, and this M1, that's just related to how much number you have, right? So let's assume this will be one more, this will be another one more. So you then you can put in this number there, right? So let let's get this as one mole. So this will be uh, uh, an Avogadro constant together with mole. So this will be a constant here, right? Multiplied by one mole. That's total number of moleculars you would have in M1 case, which is your solvent A. It will be six power of uh, this is equal to 6 power of you know, 23, something around that line. There's a lot of molecules, right? So this will be a constant. And ln x1, the volume fraction of x1, you only have 0, 0 0.5 of x1 is, where x1 is, right? Plus, you can have the same amount, one more. Then line 0 0.5. So this equation will tell you exactly what would be um, the the entropy of mixture for mixing one more of solvent A and one more of solvent B. And if you have calculator, you can just put in these numbers and calculate it. And K, you can look it up. It's a constant on the internet. It's just called Einstein-Boltzmann constant. Okay. So any question relate to a simple case, how you mix to ideal of a white ball or solvent A with black ball, and how you get the entropy out of it? Pretty straightforward, huh? You can, hey, question, I like that, please. If they're liquid-like, then I don't think so. If they are more older, it happens in extreme cases where they would crystallize, and the theory would applies here will not be you know, applied to them in that scenario. But it's interesting, so I never heard this question. Good call. Um, so what we solved now for the first part of the classes we talk about entropy of mixing and if A and B mix there's no heat generate taking or give out you can see that entropy is always favor the mixing so when whatever material you put in they always gonna mix because delta S will be larger than zero okay you will you will always drive the system into more disorder states. Perfect. So next step, let's consider a little bit more details in terms of how does uh, entropy comes into play in this role. We, we know entropy is always favored, but entropy may not always favor your system to mix. They might require a lot of heat absorption, which is inhibited in which will allow total free energy to be you know, on a plus sign, which it will you know, cause the system not to be spontaneous mix. This would happen. So let's consider, how do we, how do we consider the mixing of, mixing of the enthalpy of mixing? Any, anyone give any clue how you would tackle this problem from a scratch? Think about you are a noble, a lord for somewhere in the Europe, you are so rich that you don't need to worry about eat 
and you now have so much time to think about what this uh, enthalpy is if I mix in two gas molecules. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Lord Michael, <laughs> what, what's your suggestion? So you look at the uh, intermolecular interactions of A to A versus B to B, and then A to B, and then whichever one has the most favorable values will tell you enthalpically whether or not they'll mix. We should have called Michael's law from now on instead <laughs> of whoever <laughs> invited 200 ago, right? That's exactly the way we should tackle this. So. All right, L let's think about the case. What, do I, what Michael's means is, what do you think about? In case we're still going to draw this interesting phases, we're still going to be called an, uh, a white ball solvent A, right? So you, in this case, you're going to have a lot of A sitting here. Then each of them, um, A and A can interact. We call it an interaction AA, right? You're always going to have that interaction. And Similarly, you can have solvent B, and this will well now think about as a white ball. So, so this, there's two type of interaction. In terms of in in first scenario, you will have in pure A case, you will always have white ball intact with the white ball, right? Oh, this is actually black. This is a white. So white solvent, uh, black solvent A interact uh, with black solvent B. Well, before mixing, you also have black sol uh, white solvent B interact with uh, white solvent B, right? And after mixture, now you're going to have some, some new terms where you can think about my real drawing where I'm trying to make it random, but it seems close enough. Where you will have interaction between black and black still, if they're in neighbor with each other, which is solvent AA interaction. Right? So we can call this solvent AA interaction, where just uh, you have interaction solvent A with itself. You will also have solvent BB interaction where you have these two a white solvent <laughs> interaction. You still, bless you, you're still going to be having two cases, but now you're going to have one more possibility is solvent A plus B, A, A and B now plus B, and together with some volume, some fraction still going to be interacting with itself. Right? So you're going to have, this is something new, where you don't have in the other two cases. This is after mixture, OK? So that's, that's what the consideration is. So how can we? Um, how can we understand this? So we need to introduce a new terms in this case. So we need to introduce a new term called a molecular interaction term. So this is time to be um, an oversimplified term that basically trying to generalize what the interaction would be. Of course, in 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 real case, while well, the molecular interaction can be rather complicated. There will be if the is a molecule is charged, they will be have uh, electrical interaction. If they get too close, they will have repulsion. Even with um, without charge for the regular molecule, you know you would also have repulsions if they're close enough. And if they're further away, they have uh, other interaction parameter. So we will not consider so complicated system. We're just going to call it. There will be a term that can describe the interaction. We call it, um, just make sure I got it right. So it's called W11. So 
and you will see where m1 comes into play. m11 defines as interaction between a and b, a and a, sorry, by itself. So that's what we call it in one one. So one is just uh, represents molecular one or a, okay? So how much total interaction will we actually have <laughs> in, in this box? We're going to have um, several terms we need to further define. I will need to tell you how many numbers again. N1 is number of molecular. Right? That's just to tell you how much total number is. Please? What, sorry, what, what symbol is that with the 1, 1? W? W, yeah. I can do a better job. <laughs> yeah, better. Sorry. I can't okay. see it until after you write it, so I'm yeah. behind by the time that you see it. Yeah. <laughs> no worry. So we define the two interesting terms. One is just how much interaction is like over generalized you have between A and B. And M1 is just number of total number of that. Can we just uh, use a very simple term to describe? In the lattice series, again, I'm going to draw this checkerboard again. So if we use this uh, classical flory hagen series, you're again going to see if you have a molecular field in this checkerboard. It's, again, it's very simplified case, but you now see, we also need to consider another term called what's the neighbor, nearest neighbor you have, because, you know, if, if you think about this classroom, the students sitting next to you will have closer interaction. E either they love or hate each other, uh, either way, but they're going to be an interaction. But if it's a little bit further away, the interaction force will die out rather quickly. So in this case, we only need to consider your nearest neighbor. So you don't need to worry about the rest of the class, where you just need to figure out how much neighbors you have. OK? So in this series, in this very oversimplified case, you can just say the, we can define the na nearest neighbor yeah, assistant neighbor. Oh, I need to look at how to spell this. Okay, so that's where is um most important. And this we can define as just a Z. Z is a number. So that's tell you this number will tell you how much neighbor is. In this case, the nearest number is four. Because up and right and left, up and down, left and right, you have four neighbors that will contribute to this. So in this case, it's, it's just four. But in 3D spacing, where this is clearly is 2D, two-dimensional. In three-dimensional, while your solvent is going around, this value can be generalized to be something bigger, but may not be necessary to be six, because the bulkiness of your molecular plays a role we can just call it uh, generalized Z. You can see that Z is somewhere between 4 to 6, this value, OK? Now we can basically use those three terms to find out what would be the total energy, total interaction energy between itself, right? So in this case, you can see um, energy for A, solvent A in this case. Um, let me find a place where I can write. I'm just right here. So we can just uh, call it enthalpy for so system one or this case one two one plus two will be equals to um, total number of m one 
multiply by uh, interaction z, how much neighborhood are, and w, 1, 1. And there always a, a term that I found that's interesting. It's over counting the interaction in this particular case. If you look at this equation, the total number, its neighbor, and what's the interaction with neighbor. But it's, there is a factor of one and a half. I'll let you think about why we need to consider this by, by calculating the total energy in the system. Anyone? Because remember, you do look at the nearest neighbors. Uh, so, so if you shift up from the one you have centered on that grid, yeah. you've already counted the one below it. And then, so like every time you shift, you've already counted. Right, half of right. Like me and you. Right. I have interest in you, you have interest in me. <laughs> but it's only counted the one interaction, me and Michael, right? But that may not be a good thing. <laughs> but that's where the half is coming from. So z is the distance from the neighbor? No, it's not distance. Z is the number closest in the packet neighbor they have. So if you look at this case, so this is uh, where the center of molecule and where they have four neighbors around it. OK? OK. They have total number of four, right? Because well, you know, if the if molecule is far away, there is not the interaction is so low, we don't count them anymore in terms of how we calculate in the enthalpy. OK? So um, I'll give you guys a little bit of homework. I apparently, H2 will be, again, half of number of N2. Again, the neighbor and interaction with itself. So I want to ask you, what will be the interaction in this? And I won't, talk, won't have the time to talk about this, but I want you to think about how would you count the interaction in a mixture phase where you now have N and 1 molecular A and 2 molecular B, and how would you count them in terms of the interaction? And I'll give you some hint. So you will have interaction by itself, N1, 1, N2, 2, 2, and some of them are N1, 1, 2. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a generalized energy. So in this case, it could be anything in, in terms of molecular interaction, van der Waals force, or you know the other repulsion if you like get closer to each other. So we, for the simplicity of discussion, we just uh, call it molecular average molecular interaction defined as interaction between AA or molecular solvent by itself. Uh, Tyler? Would you just take the M terms and the W terms and uh, generalize them by making the M12, uh, M1 plus M2 over M1 times M2, and then do the same thing for the W term? And say, say that again. Sorry, I was uh, mixed so uh, following. So the Try M it again. So the third term would be M1 plus M2 divided by M1 times M2. That's that's um, that's very good way to think. I think you are again pretty close. Okay. Very close. I will give you a hint that is related to the probability. What's the probability of you interacting with yourself and with uh, the other neighbor? Zero. Why zero? Oh, it's not going to be. With so, okay. with Michael? <laughs> with Michael, zero. All right. All right. Wow. Okay, so now. We're going to have finished the, the first part of this. I'm going to take a break, and uh, my graduate student will help you guys fill in the, the homework part. He will explain to you guys the questions, and uh, um, you, will, you will have a chance to interact with Luke as well. And we're going to take a five minutes break, then you can take the stage. Um, so this Thursday is going to be the test. So I have my another graduate student will hand to you guys the test for chapter one. And you say, where would, when would it be, uh, where would it be the best <coughs> place for him to give you guys the test? It could be in the bullpen. Bullpen? Okay, I'll, I'll mention to my graduate student. So he will give you guys the test at the noon at the bullpen. So you have it. And then next noon, you can have it back. Good? And Heavy? Actually, we'll be in class. Yeah, actually, don't we? We'll have class with you after Thursday. Yeah.
still, I will be traveling, so I won't be here. So we won't have a class. Oh. It will be just a test. Oh. I'll, I'll ask him to put a basket and label it in the in the in the ball pen. It's like a Christmas gift. While you wake up, you see a pile of exam. One more question somewhere. Okay, okay, I'm fine. It's fair. You know, one hour. I literally don't think one hour make any difference. But make sure. So some of you guys handed in homework a little bit late, but exam, I need to be strict. It will be one, okay. and my student will clock up the, the box again. And if it's not in the box. Oh, so we just stick so it back in the box of the bullpen and they'll collect Yeah, put a oh. folder and seal it somewhere. Okay, I trust you guys. Um, so again, uh, I fortunately will not be around next Tuesday. So we can resume class on Thursday next week. Okay. Okay. okay, then <laughs> then then we can meet each other in two weeks. We are actually right now not doing not too bad in the progress. I think we are still going to be on schedule. Is that will be good? Are you going back to camp? This will not be Order. test. Okay, this is not on the test. Somewhere in Tennessee. Even better. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. No collaboration with our student, but you can so refer to your lab notes. So this will be helpful. Okay, so uh, Luke, the tester is right there. Yeah. Let me clean up my, my writings. I think either way. I mean, you just okay. uh, be right. about uh, 12, uh, 24 hours and return to yes, my graduate student. Oh, you're going to love this. Uh, you're going to love this. Uh, I'm going to show you guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I was almost decided to wear it uh, yesterday. Okay, everyone have a good test and break. <laughs>